the young artist pushing the boundaries of form and philosophy, high-stakes stunts from one of cinema's shadow players, and a new film follows wolves into the French wilderness. That's all coming up in today's show. Well, we're starting with an artist who defies simplistic categories when it comes to the medium she works in. Choreography, sculpture and video are all part of her creative toolbox. Sarah Truche has been awarded a knighthood here in France for her work and her efforts to challenge the representation of women in art. France 24's Rono Lefort and Colin Kinnebura went to see one of her recent performances here in Paris. Avec vos balais, vous êtes avec vos balais, quoi. On y est, voilà, on est fier, on est guerrière, on se tient, on sort les, on sort les nibards et on est là, quoi. We are here. Three words that capture the message of French artist Sarah Trouche. Working alongside a professional boxer and dancers from around the country, Trouche is best known for her politically engaged choreography, like this piece, which challenges women's representation in the art world. This summer I visited the major art museum in Bordeaux and many others in France. And I realized that women were always presented as widows, as beaten, raped, submissive or allegorical. Often associated with women's subordination, even exploitation, here the brooms are planted firmly against the ground as if to set a boundary. Pairs of underwear form a circle where the protagonists tell their stories. It's underwear. I put out a call on social media and hundreds of women sent me their panties. As a man, we get an idea of what women go through. It's very powerful, very brave. This show really blew me away. She's one of the rare artists who creates a movement of energy. She invites the audience and other artists to join. Trouche, who was raised in southwestern France and trained in fine arts in Paris, makes visual art too, like the works on display at this gallery in the heart of the capital. Here what we have in front of us are plaster heads of an artist molded plastic bags onto. These works represent self-association that takes place in our society, where really we don't want to see what's going on around us, so we cover ourselves up. Despite the often gloomy subjects she addresses, Trouche remains an eternal optimist. That's what especially interests me about visual arts. You can take on issues that are pretty serious, but you can also show a way out. For example, in the exhibition with the asphyxiated heads, with the blue plastic bags, by the time you reach the end, there's one who's practically a superhero. When it comes to heroes, Trouche also looks to the women of Benin. Her most recent project is based on the masked female figure of Gelede. Once a year, local men cross-dress in tribute to the mothers who give society life. For Trouche, it's one more way of transforming human bodies into art and beginning to unravel a tangled world. Next, a 15th century artwork has finally come to light after a decade-long search spanning several countries and even piquing the interest of Iranian secret services. A book of the collected works of Persian poet Hafez went missing in 2007 after its art dealer owner died. Quite the loss, since the gold leaf plated tome was worth $1.1 billion. Well, when it came to tracking it down, there was only one man for the job, Arthur Brand, dubbed the Indiana Jones of the art world. He delved into the murky underworld of stolen artifacts. Let's hear more from him on how the search got started. One of my German informants 
called me and I said, Arthur, I was visited by some people from Iran related to the embassy, but we all know what that is. And they are searching for a Divan of Harvest stolen in Munich in 2007. And they asked me, so they think, I have something to do with this, but I have no idea. But I'm scared. Can you come over and talk it over with me? So I went to Germany. We spoke about it and we thought the best way to solve this is to find it ourselves. Next to a profession that involves more tangible perils, the life of a stuntman. Mario Luraski will soon be celebrating 50 years on the job, a risky business that's seen him act alongside some of French cinema's biggest names and a career that's been boosted by his exceptional horsemanship. Our reporters went to meet him. He has played the role of almost every hero in the movie industry. Mario Larashi is one of cinema's most prominent stuntmen. There you go, he has to dance a little bit. This is how kings rode, kings used to parade. But Larashi remains the king of stunts. He has starred in more than 500 movies, advising famous French actors like Christian Clavier, Jean Reno, Sophie Marceau, and even Salma Hayek. Lurashi, though, says the biggest stars are his horses. He's trained them for 50 years now, helping them meet the demands of producers. From water to fire, Mario Lurashi and his horses know no limits. Voilà. What you see is the result of hard work, and what appears violent, well, everything is prepared beforehand. When a horse falls, he falls onto a padded mattress. Today, the stuntman lives with his family in a giant teepee-shaped house, which he built himself. His passion for horses began many years ago, back when he was a teenager. The young Lurashi, who was fascinated by the Native American culture, traveled to the United States and spent several long periods of time living on Native American reservations. That is where he learned the secrets of how to communicate with horses. I think horse riding is the most exceptional passport in the world. Thanks to horses, I was able to meet the queen. I went to Dubai and met emirs thanks to horses. An entire part of the house is dedicated to horses. All of these saddles were used in movies. But whether they're on the big screen or behind the scenes, Lurashi says all eyes should be on his best friends. Next to a documentary filmed here in France, in remote corners of the Alps, but also close to towns and villages where man and beast live perhaps closer than they'd think. In Walking with Wolves, director Jean-Michel Bertrand follows young wolves as they leave the pack to conquer new territory. The film has stirred up some controversy, with Bertrand receiving death threats for taking a stance against the killing of these animals. James Vecina has more. Following footsteps in the snow, trying to track down lone wolves. For two years, Jean-Michel Bertrand films young wolves leaving their packs as they venture across the mountains in search of a new territory. Le jeune loup est introuvable, invisible. La meute, elle, se montre. Elle protège son territoire. On their journey, the wolves cross paths with humans as urbanization takes over their natural habitats. It's a film that's against the killing of wolves. It is an extremist, but it's a documentary that aims to open people's eyes about our relationship with nature and the wilderness. Jean-Michel Bertrand tackles the issue of attacks on herds, which he says can be solved by bringing back shepherds to oversee their animals. Ici, la dernière attaque remonte à 4 ans. C'est toujours un bonheur de croiser des gens passionnés par leur métier. Ce métier de berger qui était en déclin, qui, depuis le retour du loup, a retrouvé ses lettres de noblesse. But the topic remains controversial. Bertrand has received three death threats. And these images were posted online ahead of the film's release. La pression n'est plus tenable pour les éleveurs. He hopes this film will help ease tensions in the debates. Wolves had disappeared from France 80 years ago, but today there are about 500 of them across the country. 
We're wrapping up the programme with some sharp looks for men as this season's Haute Couture shows kick off here in Paris. From Virgil Abloh's whimsical take on boyhood to Rick Owen's performative collection, there were also theatrics from Issey Miyake, who drew inspiration from the jazz age for his show. We'll leave you with a glimpse of some of Louis Vuitton's creations on the catwalk. Otherwise, do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture, and you can keep up with us on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.